this is shouting Sunday. Come on and shout. Let's give God some glory. I dare you to turn to somebody and say, he lives. He lives. Come on, with all power in his hands, he lives. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We sing glory to his name. Come on, let's praise him in this place. Oh, a little fast. Come on. Da, 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 da. Yes, sir. The song says, down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied, we're singing glory to his name. Y'all help me sing, sing glory, glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. There at the cross where the blood was applied. Glory to his name. Oh, I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. We're saying what? Whoa, we're singing glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Oh, oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad that I've entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. We're singing glory to his name. Y'all got it. Come on and say it. Glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of fire. Glory to his name. Verse 4 says, come to this fountain so rich and seed. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's fleet. You can plunge in today and be made complete. Come on, glory to his name. Help me say glory to his name. We're singing glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Say it. Glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. One more time we'll sing glory to his name. Say glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Pilgrim Land News. On this segment of Pilgrim Land News, we would like to invite the entire congregation out for our Moments in WOW, the weekly opportunities of worship. We start them off on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. here at the church for fuel. Then on Mondays, the Momentum Men Ministry happens here at the church at 6 p.m. 
all men are encouraged to come out and join the brothers as they fellowship in the Lord. On Tuesdays at 11 a.m., the Lady Bible Study takes place here on campus or on Zoom. So all ladies are encouraged to join the Lady Bible Study to learn more about what God has for us. Please be advised that beginning on April 3rd, 2024, Life Night will go to spring hours from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Again, you can join us for Life Night either here on campus or on Zoom. But our spring hours will be from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. We hope to see everyone there. You will not want to miss these great moments in WOW, our weekly opportunities of worship. As we have come to this Resurrection Sunday, we have come to a close on our 50 day around the clock prayer. We appreciate everyone that took the time to pray, not only for our church, but for our nation. We ask that you continue to pray and pray without ceasing, for we all need it. Again, thank you and may God continue to pray. The Harvest of Hope ministry is in full swing. And we thank God for allowing us to be able to bless as many families as we have within our community. In keeping with our pastor's vision, we want to make sure that the members of Pilgrim Land are supporting our pastor's vision for victory. All members whose last names begin with A, B, E, F, G, and H, you are encouraged to bring your items on the first Sunday. To find out which item that you are encouraged to bring, please see Minister Anthony McCoy for more information. We interrupt this broadcast for breaking news. On Sunday, April the 7th, we are the invited guests of the Grace Tabernacle Baptist Coastal Church in Fort Worth, Texas, to help our co-pastor, Dr. Roy E. Brecken, and his wife celebrate their anniversary. We will leave immediately following morning worship, and everyone is encouraged to get on the bus. The cost to ride the bus is $10, and all children are able to ride free. The last day to pay to ride the bus is March 26th. All members are asked to support our pastor as we go to Fort Worth to help celebrate. Good morning, Pilgrim Land. As you can see, I am in the Harvest of Hope Food Market. But it didn't always look like this. This was once one of the many classrooms here at Pilgrim Land. But through the vision of Dr. Bell, it was transformed into the Harvest of Hope food market, which enables us to provide meals for families in our community. This is only a snippet of what Dr. Bell has accomplished in his 27-year tenure here at Pilgrim Land. Again, the Appreciation Committee has asked each member to sow a $270 seed offering into the life of Dr. and First Lady Bell. You can log into Givelify and select the tab marked 27 Pastor and Wife's Anniversary and give on a weekly basis. Together, we can make this year's appreciation service the best one ever. The women of the New Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church are hosting Ladies' Night Out. It will happen on Friday, April 26th from 6 to 9 p.m. They will be hosting food, fun, and games. The cost will be $10. If you are interested in participating in Ladies Night Out, please see Sister Patsy Bush or Elizabeth Singleton for more information. They would love to have all ladies there. The New Pilgrim Rest Church would like to send a huge shout out to Ms. Kiana Tarver for being the recipient of the Interdenominational Ministerial Alliance Scholarship. Again, we would like to say congratulations and may you go forth. Hey Amen. Thank you. Uh, media ministry for those announcements. Amen. Uh, two things. Uh, first of all, um, we have to, the, who, who has signed up for the bus for next week? Amen. 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 Now, for those who have not, we need you to sign up today because the bus, the bus will be ordered um, tomorrow, this week. So, please, ma'am, please, sir, sign up today. You can see um, Sister um, Singleton, Oh, Sister Patsy Bush, amen. Amen, there they go, right there to my left, amen. Raise your hand. All right, see them right there. We need your signatures on that bus. Um, well, next week, we want to support our pastor. We want to support our sister church, amen. Amen. And another thing, I was asked to read a card, amen, and it reads, This world needs more people who leave things a little better than they found them. 
People who reach out to others with unconditional comp compassion, people who are brave enough to do the right thing at the right time. It reads, to my entire church family. Not many people can say they know someone, but your gracious giving heart, but I can. You're simply amazing and so easy to celebrate. Words cannot express how much me and my family appreciate all the love and the support we received during this difficult time. Thank you for all the calls, the texts, the cards, and hugs. Above all else, I'm most grateful for your many prayers. Love you all. And this is from um, Love, Lo Love Lolita and family. Amen. <laughs> Let's continue to... Um, pray for Sister Lolita and, and her grief in this grieving process. It is not easy um, losing a son. Amen. But God is able. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Sister, God is able to comfort you, Sister Lolita, in your grieving process. And we promise you we're going to continue to pray for you. Amen. All right. Come on, music ministry. The blood that Jesus shed just for me, oh, way back on me strength from day to day it will never never lose its power it's too my doubts and it calms every fear and it dries all every one of my tears so glad the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose. It'll lose, won't lose its power. I know it reaches to the highest mountain so glad it flows to the lowest valley oh yes the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. Help me say it right here, y'all. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest 
me strength from day to day it will never lose its power come on sing it with conviction this time y'all so glad it reaches to the highest mountain, so glad that it flows to the lowest valley. Yes, the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will never lose. Say it again. It will never lose. It will never lose. Hey, it's power. Never lose its power. Come on, let's church it, y'all. It's power. Hey, it'll never lose its power. So glad his power. Hey, never lose its power. Oh, it'll never lose its power. Help me say his power. It'll never lose its power. It's healing power. Yes, sir. Never lose its power. Redeeming power. Never lose its power. Soul saving power. Never lose its power. I'm so glad it'll keep you. Hey, never lose its power. It'll pick you up. Yes, it will. Never lose its power. Turn you all around. Never lose its power. Yeah, it's power. Let's take it right here. Hey, it will never lose. It will never lose. It will never. It's power. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. There is power. Power. Wonder working power. In the blood. Yes, sir. Of the Lamb. There is power. Power, none the working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Y'all said, oh! No, that makes me, that makes me white as snow. No other, no other I know together y'all nothing but the blood of Jesus my 
my, 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 my. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of, of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Absolutely nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me hold again? Absolutely nothing but the blood of Jesus. My, 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 my. Giving praise and honor to God, our Father. Uh, our eternal resting Father who allows us rest in the midst of our storms. We bring you greetings to this waiting August body of believers and to those of you who have uh, tuned in through Facebook Live uh, to our website. We thank God again for your presence, your power, uh, and your peace that he's going to give you on today. Amen. Amen. Let me just thank Brother Chad Lott, ain't, you know, ain't, ain't but one Chad, ain't but one Chad Lott, ain't, I mean, he knows how to reach back and get them, uh, he, was, he was taught by one of the best, Rodney, Rodney Lott, so he's just a chip off the old, old block. And uh, we're so grateful to uh, Nicole Hogan. Uh, amen. And then to, to our saxophonist, we are grateful to God. And then to our drummer, thank you so much. Now, I'm, I'm cognizant that we, many of you, I've been in at least four, this is the fourth service for some of us. Uh, sunrise and six, breakfast at seven, and fuel at eight, and now we're at the third, fourth watch. Uh, and we, so we're grateful to God again for you staying and sticking with us. Uh, amen. And so we want to be brief, but we certainly want to be beneficial. Uh, and we're grateful to God again for uh, this day, this opportunity to come and share our convictions about our Christ. Uh, thank God for this ministerial staff uh, who's always uh, on target, uh, always on alert. We had a tremendous message, sunrise, amen. Uh, our beloved director, food, uh, food director, food store director, uh, Pastor um, McCoy preached us about exciting news from an empty tomb. My, my, my. And you could, you could feel and sense the excitement uh, of him preaching about the empty, empty tomb. That, that is a word that's, that's, found, that's, that's found in John chapter Twenty. Uh, it is couch chronicled and catalog in the crevices of this particular sacred text. John chapter twenty, verse verse nineteen. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. When, and when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Well, that's almost a sermon. I'm going to test some scattered remarks and we'll be on our way to Easter meal. Uh, turn to the person next to you real quick.
point at them at least. You don't want to turn to, you don't want to touch nobody. You, you don't want to. Tell neighbor, with God's help and our prayers, pastor going to preach about deflated by doubt, but divinely delivered. Amen. Deflated by doubt, but divinely delivered. That was a wealthy man who asked an artist to paint him a picture that depicts peace. The artist painted a picture of a house in the country with cows, goats, all of the flowers around it. And he took it to the wealthy man and he looked at it and said, this is not a picture of peace. The artist went back to his studio and looked at the canvas, meditated, and then he began to paint another picture. Painted a picture of a mother holding a child and smiling at the child. Rushton took it back to the wealthy man. He said, this is not a picture of peace. Well, by then, the artist, uh, he done got he gotten angry, a little apoplectic, and he went back home, and he really prayed about it, thought about it, meditated about it, and he, and he went back to the canvas and painted like he never painted before. And when he finished painting, he took it to the wealthy man, and the wealthy man looked at it, and while he was looking at it, the artist was holding his breath, praying that he would accept it. Uh, the wealthy man looked at it several minutes, and he said, now this is a picture of peace. What did he paint? He painted a furious storm. And he allowed to capture the waves that they beat up against the storm. And the black raindrops and lightning dazzling in the back. But in the midst of that, he painted a little bird hit off in a cliff, not bothered by the storm. And the man said, now this is a picture of peace. And here Jesus comes to his disciples after, after, after the resurrection, after they had had a rough day, after chaos, and cataclysmic circumstances. He, he walks into their life. They are broken, battered, beaten, and disgusted. They are deflated because the one whom they had had hoped in, they thought he was still dead. And, and John, Mother Patterson, captures this text for us because John, John writes, he says, he said, then the same day at evening. <laughs> now, he, he told us it was the same day in verse 1 of chapter 20, but now he's in verse 19, and he says, and then the same day at evening being the first day of the week, which is Sunday. This is the Lord's day. The, the, the Lord's day is you, you rest before you work. The Sabbath day is when you rest after you work. 
this, this is definitely the Lord's, the Lord's day. And, and John says, John said, and when evening being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Now, now this, this, this text, this, this, this text, Pat, bothered me because it says on the first day, now listen, Jesus had been, he was in the grave three days. He's up out of the grave early Sunday morning. This would suggest that the disciples were hidden at least three days. In fact, Mark tells us in Mark 14, 50 that they all forsook him. After he was arrested, the disciples took off because they didn't want to go down that same road. But now Mark did tell us there was one young man who, were, who was naked and, and, and they arrested him. We assume it was John because John was at the grave site of, of uh, not the grave site, but at the cross when, when Jesus got ready to put his mother in someone's care. It was John. So John said, I beg the difference. I was there. I, I, I was there. But, 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 but th these disciples whom he had taught for three years, he, he had taught them, he had, he had labored with them, trained them, and soon as he expected to reap from his training, uh, looking for some fruit from his training, the text said, John said, they, 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 were, they, were, they were in a room. And the text says, and the doors were shut. Now, now <laughs> when you look at that word shut in the Greek language, it suggests they put dead boats. And they put, they put a rod across the door. They, they, they were secured because they really didn't want anybody to get in. You know, when you want to keep people out, you put all your locks on. Some people got four, five, six locks on the door. <laughs> and, I mean, you ring the doorbell, you got... <laughs> you, you don't think they're going to ever quit opening. <laughs> this is a picture of the disciples. These are, this is a picture of the disciples, and, and, and the text says, the text said they, they, were, they were in a room. Now, now, when Jesus comes to them, this is post-resurrection. They, 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 they took off pre-resurrection and locked themselves behind closed doors. In fact, Mark, Mark said, didn't none of those rascals witness the crucifixion? Here's my first point. But in spite of them being locked behind double doors, double deadlock doors, there was an extraordinary entrance. Because the text said Jesus just showed up. I'm sure he was aware, Wes, how many locks they had on the door. He knew, he knew that rail that they had put across the door. But well, John 10, 9 says, I am the door. He doesn't knock. He doesn't do what Peter did when he was out of prison. Peter knocked at the door. Jesus just walked through the door. The text says, 
the text says, he stood in the midst. Histeme here is the word for stood. He, he, in, 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 other, in, in, in other words, it means to, to be supportive in your stand. He, he wasn't wobbling. He, he wasn't like he had no weak legs. He, he was standing firm. And he does the same thing in our lives. Watch the text. The, the text says, he stood in the midst. He stood in the midst. Everything we need is in the midst. Of him who created everything. Now, I want to say to us, let's not be too hard on these disciples. Because we who are his first, we are first cousins of these disciples. Now, now, he had put a towel around him in John chapter 13. Watch there dirty, stinking, nasty feet. And you remember Peter said, Lord, I'm not going to let you wash my feet. He said, Peter, if you don't let me wash them, you'll have no part with me. And Peter said, then, okay, if that's the case, wash me all over. <laughs> he that has a bath need not be washed. Several Greek words that word washed in there. One, one, one of the words, I don't have time to hang there, but what Jesus was literally saying is that um, once you're saved, you don't have to be saved over. When Jesus talked about wash in John chapter 13, he said, but on our way home, sometimes we get dirty. Yeah, when you take a bath and you pick something up that's dirty, you don't go back there and, and bathe your whole body. You just wash your hands. Jesus says in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, how many men? If it were not so, I wouldn't even bother y'all with it. But I'll go and prepare a place for you. If I go, I'll receive you again, come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. Now, now watch what he said. He said in John chapter 15, he said, my father is the husbandman. Y'all are the branches. Every branch that, that remains, that abide in me shall bear much fruit. In fact, he said in John 15, 7, he says, ask what you will. If my word abide in you, you abide in my word. Ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Word done is the Greek word genomai. He said, now listen, if you get to a place, a point in your life is not there, I'll create it. <laughs> now they've heard all of this there on. He's been teaching them. Now, wait a minute. John 16, 33. He says, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. And here it is. Test time. See, some people are good in class. I can talk like that because I'm lifting transcripts from my own life. Oh, I was a heck of a student in class. Oh, I was one of the best in class. 
But when the teacher told me to put everything, take everything off your desk. Sylvia, Sylvia, she tell me, just leave your pencil. Everything she had taught me prior to the test is gone away. And many of us are like this. We're good in church. Have no problem leading a song. No problem praying. No problem ushering. But when the test comes. L listen, this, 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 this text, this, this text is speaking to, to you and I today. Now, this is Resurrection Sunday. And there's nothing wrong with us celebrating Resurrection Sunday. But is that all there is to it? Now let me ask you, how have the resurrection resurrected your life? Now, Easter is not about getting new garments. And it's certainly not about the bunny. It's about a, a savior who gave his life. It, it, it's about, it's, it's really about having a transformative moment. The resurrection ought, ought to be at this point, unlike these disciples. It ought to have made us better. In other words, wherever I was lack or slacking, ought to be better now. The resurrection, the resurrection was designed to move us from stagnant, from stack, from stagnant worship. Some people just barely make it in. Ain't moved since the service started. What you say he got up? There's an empty tomb. Well, why is our worship dead? Why is our witness dead? Why is our walk dead? Well, maybe, maybe. Just maybe. I was reading about the Rolls Royce, the Naval drop tail Rolls. Joe, 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 that 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 Nabov is is a French word that means black. It refers to a black woman. It refers to a black car or a black watch. It starts at thirty million dollars. Jamal, I thought about the price of the car. Thought about the name. Even thought about the color. I said, but 
if one of those wheels don't stay connected to the hub, you got a $30 million vehicle that won't move. It has to stay connected to the hub. Now, with all of its value, it don't run on three wheels. Frank, it has to run on four wheels. It has to stay connected to the hub. The hub, the hub if I can say it metaphorically, that the, the hub is God the Father. The rim, God the Son. The tire, God the Holy Spirit. You have to stay connected to them. It, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you wear, what you drive, where you stay, nothing about you. You got to stay connected to the hub in order to be effective. Could it be that we are so lackadaisical in our approach to ministry? Are we dressed? Are we dressed? Oh, we drive, and you go out in the parking lot. Get some nice cars out, but are you connected? This text says these disciples were disconnected. They they were they were hiding for fear of the Jews, and Jesus had told them. Not to fear. Don't worry about a thing. I've already, what's going, listen, what's going to upset you, I've already taken care of it. I've, I've already handled, I've already handled it. So when you take the test, you can ace it. But these disciples, Derek, they flunked the test. They, they were... They were deflated because all of their hope seemed to have been gone. All of their aspiration was, was in the grave. They just knew could nobody take Jesus from them. I mean, he'd raised the dead. He gave sight to the, to the blind, unstopped deaf ears. And they just knew that he was going to set up his kingdom. But the text says they were locked, barred behind closed doors. Now this text begs me to ask you, so I'm going to ask you. <laughs> what are you locked behind? Is it forgiveness? Is it repentance? Is it procrastination? What is it that have you locked behind doors? This text begs us to be living witnesses to the resurrection. You see, you see, no, nobody's gonna know about Christ unless we tell them. Now, now, this text also begs me to ask another question. If the sinners depended on you to hear about Jesus, 
what chances would they have? I, I got I, 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 yeah, I to get out of here. Let me, no, I got to get out of here. I gotta get, no, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Sometimes our greatest weakness can turn out to be our greatest strength. So, Sometimes our greatest loss can turn out to be our greatest gain. Sometimes our greatest suffering can turn out to be our greatest blessing. It all depends on who you're hooked to. Well, let, let me let me let, let, let me move. Let me let me move. Let me move. Well, my second point, if, if I can give you one, is that Jesus comes in and he eliminates the enemy. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The, the text says, the text says they were locked behind doors with the fear or fear of the Jews. That's the enemy. Fear is an enemy. But Jesus has already defeated the enemy. Now, see, all we have to do is really, all we have to do is really accept and appropriate that that he's already given us. Why are we living like it's pre-resurrection? This is post-resurrection. After the fact. And we're just gliding through the motion. Many of us come to church because we ain't got nothing else to do. In fact, it's a habit to so many of us. But the resurrection begs the difference. We, we ought to, if, 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 he, if, and he did, if he got up, then we ought to be better. We ought to be better. Now, wait a minute. He eliminated the enemy. But how did he do that? It's right here in the text. It's, it, I'm not making it up. The text says, Jesus stood in the midst and said unto them, he eliminate the enemy by giving them verbal comfort. He eliminated the enemy by giving them visual comfort. He eliminated the enemy by giving them victory comfort. It's right in the text. The text says, the text says that Jesus said unto them, peace be unto you. They were shaken. And Jesus walked right in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Now, he says peace at least twice. I don't have time to go to that because I want y'all to get home and kick your dinner. Uh, but, but the first time he says peace be unto you, he's talking about the peace with God. Because of your separation, I want you to have peace with God. The second time you say, I want you to have the peace of God. And you can't have the peace of God without the peace with God. Watch the text. The, 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 te the, text, says, the text says that he said unto them, peace be unto you. Now, now watch this, verse 20. I, I'm, I'm out of here. And when he had so said, the text says, he showed unto them, his hands. You know, some of us got a, a Missouri state of mind. Yeah, you got to show me. I ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't trying to hear that. I ain't trying to hear that. You got to show me. No, no, no. I've been, 
I'm, I'm going to do the best I can. I've been trying to encourage this church to help us help others. I said, now, we, 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 we can help feed those who are without. I've been asking this church, and many have responded. But there's many that haven't responded. Because you got to show you. Many people respond to sound. Some people resound, respond to sight. This text says he showed him. He showed them his hands. He said, I don't want y'all to think it's a ghost. He showed them his hands. Now, wait, wait a minute. He showed them his hands. The text says, the text says, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. Verse 19 said he stood in the midst. Y'all didn't see it? It was not until he showed them his hands. So let's not be too hard on Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Well, he wasn't the only doubters. This text says, after he showed them his hand, that I'm not making it up. Then were the disciples glad. So his appearance, his presence, didn't bother them. It didn't stir them up. In other words, in our everyday vernacular, it didn't shout them. But after he showed them his hands and his side. He said, y'all remember, y'all wouldn't remember because y'all were not there, but, <laughs> but I'm sure by now you've heard about it. That they pierced me in the side and blood and water came from my side. Blood for redemption, water for baptism. He said, it, it, put, put, take your finger and put it, in, put it in my side. He, he first of all, he first of all, he first of all had an extraordinary entrance. Secondly, he eliminated the enemy. Thirdly, he gave them everlasting enjoyment. I'm not making it, it's right in the text. And if he gave it to them, He's giving it to you as, you as well. Watch what it says. And I'm, and I'm out of here. This about how I'm going to get. I'm not getting no high in this if y'all waiting on that. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. They were excited. They were in shouting mode. After they saw the Lord. But this was the shout is. The shout, the shout here, the, the shout here, uh, Liz, is that he erased their error. Oh, oh I, I know why they <sighs> because they had a guilt written complex. And you can't shout when you have a guilt-ridden complex. This text says he erased their error. Now, their error is not the only one he's erased. See, the, the Bible said, the man, the soul that sinned shall surely die. And we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that, that word sin, harmatia in the Greek 
literally means to miss the mark. How many of us have not missed the mark? And yet, he be erased our error. Now, I know we want to come and act like we've been saved all our life, but the truth of the matter is, some of us just got saved, and, 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 but you ain't got nothing to brag about. You ain't got nothing to boast about because you didn't do the saving. You didn't pay the cost to be saved. The songwriter said he paid it all. All to him, our old sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed me whiter than snow. I'm done. I'm done. He erased their error, but he encouraged them before his exit. But even that, Frank, didn't help him. I don't have time. This will have to be a part two, part four. Because the text says he comes back eight days later. And they're still in that room. This time, Thomas is there. Eight days later, they are still locked behind closed doors. Okay, you look at me strange. The text says he appeared to him again. And he walked right in the midst of them. Because the door was still locked. How many doors are still, even after this sermon, how many doors were the message unlocked? How many are lives? How many of us are still living like it's pre-resurrection? See, when you, don't, when, you don't, when you don't do no better, when you don't go to another level, then you just act like he didn't die. But he did die. He was buried. That's the text. Matthew said he died. Mark said he died. Luke said he died. John said he died. But they also say he got up. He got up. He got up. Uh, he, he, uh, he got up with all power, heaven and earth in, in his hand. Anybody here know that he got up? The text said it was early Sunday morning. He got up from the grave. And because he got up, you and I can get up. Whatever's been holding you down, uh, whatever's been having you latched down, uh, whatever's been having you uh, laid down, you can get up uh, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, have I got a witness here? You don't have to stay behind barred doors. Uh, you're behind barred doors of uh, resurrection power. You're behind barred doors of resurrection power, but you can keep behind closed doors. Uh, have I got a witness? You have doors of disappointment. Those doors can be opened. Doors of displeasure, those doors can be opened. Doors of frustration, those doors can be opened. You can walk out behind closed doors. You've been holding grudges, but those doors have been opened. Have I got a witness? Doors of jealousy, they are now opened. Have I got a witness? And doors of shouting, they are wide open. You can shout because he got up. And when he got up, I got up. I don't walk where I used to walk. I don't talk the way I used to talk. Have I got a witness? I don't go where I used to go. All because he got up. And if he got up, he had all power in his hands. That's resurrection power. 
that's resurrection power. When he said power, exousia, that's authority. He gave us authority. Have I got a witness? We got authority to move mountains. Have I got a witness? Have I got a witness here? If you just have the faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain and it'll skip away like little lambs. Have I got a witness? But it's all because he got up. Have I got a witness? I ain't where I ought to be, but I'm so far from where I used to be, but all because he got up. Have I got a witness? And since he got up, I can go on a little bit further. I can tell a dying world that Jesus lives because he lives in me. I can tell the sick you can be made well because he made me well. Have I got a witness? I can testify. I can be a bona fide witness that whatever you're going through, he's able to bring you out. He's able to take care of you. Some of you may came in here, you're a little bit deflated. Have I got a witness? But because of his resurrection, you got some more energy. You got some more pep in your step. You got some more glide in your stride, vim in your limb. Have I got a witness? All because he got up. Anybody here know he got up? Can you shout yeah? yeah. Shout yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. yeah. Have he got up? in your life. Uh, have you got up in your life? You ought to shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Oh, I told y'all we won't go there. Ain't he good? I say, ain't he good? He's worthy. I say, he's worthy. Ain't he worthy? He's worthy to be praised. If you've been delivered, you ought to shout yeah. If you've been delivered, you ought to shout yeah. Psalm 107 verse 2 said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed, I say, if you've been redeemed, you ought to say so. If you've been bought with a price, you ought to say so. If he washed you in his precious blood, you ought to say so. Anybody here feel like shouting glory? Shout glory, glory to his name. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I say, ain't he all right? Can you tell me, Bill, why you keep saying he's all right? I can face tomorrow because he lived. I can face tomorrow because he lived. All of my fear, all of my fear is gone. Ain't he all right? I say, ain't he all right? Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Won't he walk in your life? Won't he turn your life around? Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? Ain't he worthy? I say, ain't he worthy? You ought to tell your neighbor if it had not been for the Lord on my side. I don't know where I'll be right now. I'm glad. I'm glad. The disciples ain't the only one. I'm glad that he got up. I'm glad that he lived. I'm glad that he moved. I'm glad that he saved lives. I'm glad that he healed the sick. I'm glad that he raised the dead. I'm glad that he woke how to walk. I'm glad that he knows how to forgive sin. I'm glad that when I fall, I can go to him and he'll pick me up. I'm glad. I say, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that he got up with all power in his hand. I'm glad. I say, I'm glad. When I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. It's all because he got up. He got up. I say, he got up. Is it anybody here feel a little fire rolling in a little fire burning? Feel a fire burning down in your heart. You say you wasn't going to say nothing. You wasn't going to move. But when you think about what he done, when you think about what he went through, there's a little wheel burning on the inside of your heart. Ain't nobody, anybody here know the fire wheel is burning? It burns. It burns. Jeremiah said, I wasn't going to go back 
and tell nobody else about the Lord. But I got home and sit in my easy chair. I relaxed. I put it on recline. But when I did that, something got a hold of me. It was like fire shut up in my bones. Fire shut up in my bones. Fire shut up in my bones. Anybody here ever felt that fire? Anybody here ever felt that fire? It's not like any other fire. It's that fire that make you want to do what the Lord say do. That fire make you want to run even when you're tired. That fire will have you crying and ain't nobody bothering you. That fire will have you laughing and ain't nobody told no joke. That fire will have you moving when ain't nobody asking you to move. Fire, 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 fire. Fire! Fire. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I said I was done. Deflated by doubt, but divinely delivered. I've been there. I, 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 I've been there. I believed in the word. I know he said it. But I still doubt it. And you know the good I'm not I'm not the only one in here. If you don't think you doubting, check your checkbook. List your moral payments. List your credit card payments. And then list the tithes. See if you doubt him. Test time. Test time. But he always teaches before he gives a test. He always teaches. And the reason he teaches and gives the test because he wants us to be triumphant. And we can only be triumphant when we stay connected to the hub. Doesn't that matter how much you do, how much you have. You have to run on all four wheels. And if, you, if you're at a place in your life where all four wheels are not on the road, then you're just a cute little vehicle stranded on the roadside. Throw the church open. May be one. Can't be baptized in the Christmas spirit. Throw the church is open. There is no greater love. If you're here. There is no greater love. There is no greater love. There is no Resurrection Sunday be a good day. No greater love. Be a good day. To get it right with God. They hug him high. Yes, listen. They stretched him wide. If you're here. He hung his head. For me, he died. The energy is missing. That's love. The excitement is missing. That's love. If you're here, they hung him high. It's still available. They stretched him wide. It's still available. He hung his head. 
waited and for me he died that's love that's love that's love they hung him up they stress him wide he hung be seated. You may be seated. My, 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 my. That's love. That's, that's love. That's, that's really love. Oh. Stretched him wide. Hung his head. At some point, we have to come to a personal and private conclusion that what I used to have, I don't have no more. That excitement I used to have for praising the Lord, for being involved in church, it just ain't there. I used to rush early on Sundays, so I'd make sure I would be in the choir, make sure I would be on the worship board, make sure when the deacon started praying, I was right there. But that's not there anymore. You're locked behind closed doors. Something has deflated. We can't blame it on the coronavirus no more. No, we, we, don't, we blamed it on the coronavirus for three or four weeks. We can't blame it on the coronavirus no more. Uh-uh. You, you don't get a pass. Everything is open. We're going somewhere everywhere. Amen. And then maybe some of you who are online who are not sick, who are not sick, who are not disabled, why don't you just, something is missing. We're looking so much for convenience than commitment. And Jesus is not concerned with your convenience. He's concerned with your commitment. I tell y'all what, y'all come next Sunday, I'm going to preach from the house. Can y'all can y'all put that on screen if I preach from the house, Cecily? Okay, all right. I want to be where some of you all are. But since I was divinely delivered, and I promised the Lord, if He get me up off my sick bed, that I serve Him. Until the day I die. Amen. I serve him. I worship him. I would adore him. Because I cannot pay. Nor can I match the price he paid for me. On the hill called Calvary. Are your doors still locked? Have you put a bar? A bar of commitment? Have you put a bar there? I want to encourage you and challenge you. Take the locks off. 
Man, it starts with you. It starts with you not being prideful. That's where it starts. Pride come before a hearty, hearty fall. And many of us are not where we ought to be or could be because of pride. He's already paved the way. In fact, everything we need, Keith, is at our disposal. But we're locked behind doors. And let me just say the doors that we locked. We can't, we can't blame stuff on the white man no more. We can't do that. No, no. Those days gone. Well, it's time to go. I'm, I'm going to let y'all, y'all, somebody, somebody left their meat on. Let me, let me let y'all go. Uh, it's time to give God his tithes. So while we, yeah. Now listen, real quick, if you have not signed up for the bus, I need you to do that today. I didn't say pay today, but you got to at least let us know you're going and you're going to pay before you get on the bus. You're going to pay <laughs> before you get on the bus. If you got some chilling, chilling can ride free. Chilling can ride free. Don't matter how many you got, four, five, six, they can ride free, but the adults are required or asked to pay uh, $10. Amen. That'll carry you to Fort Worth and back. Amen. Ten, ten dollars. Ten dollars. If you have not, if you have not, now listen, I, we know you got a car that, that get good gas now. That ain't what this is about. This, this is about the fellowship. This is about staying connected to the hub. This is about our church going as a church and then coming back as a church. Uh, in support and in fellowship. So if you have not signed up for the bus, uh, please, sir, please, ma'am, let me just see the hands of you that'll, that will go next Sunday right after church. Okay, okay. Now, I know some, some, all y'all done, done paid. I'll put y'all hand down. All y'all done paid. Y'all done already signed up. Now, all you that have not signed up, have not signed up. All right. I see hands up. Okay, I see hands up in the back. See me with them hands. See hands up in the back. Now somebody didn't put their hands up. Neither way. Uh, uh, somebody didn't raise your hand. Neither way. But that's okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I think Pastor, you see them. You see them. All right. Y'all just see Sister Bush. She'll uh, she make sure. Uh, and then if you have children coming with you, just tell her how many children you have, and she'll take care. Take care of that. All right. All right, now it's time to give uh, back to God what he first uh, gave to us. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, breaking news. <laughs> uh, children, there are baskets in the rear. Uh, for uh, members of this church and then for our guests as well. And then I've been told, I've been told now, and even if you need some baskets to take home, we have enough uh, in the rear. Now, I've been told that. Amen. Amen. Thank all of you for bringing uh, gifts so we can have some for our children. Uh, we thank you for that. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made bringing gifts. Uh, so there's more than enough uh, in the rear of the church, in the uh, WJS Victory Banquet Hall, uh, in the rear of the church. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, let's take our children by there. Uh, in fact, give them as much candy as they want, because they ain't going home with me. <laughs> Amen. Tell them, pastor said they can have as much as they want. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. If everybody received a, 
Okay, everybody received a uh, envelope, all right, to put his tithes in there and your offering. All right, there's a hand right up right here, right here down front. Just a couple of hands right up down front. Right down front, right down front, right down front. All right, Cornelius is coming, Cornelius is coming. Cornelius is coming. Remember, there will be food served uh, next Sunday, immediately after the worship uh, on next Sunday um, over there at uh, Grace Tabernacle. Uh, they've already, in fact, they have started cooking today, so they make sure we have enough food on next Sunday. So please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, let's load the buses and go and, and have a great time as we normally do every year. Now, what we have not decided is our dress attire, are we going to be in impact or God did it again, church? Amen. God did it again. God did it again. That's our black church, right? All right. God did it again. All right. God did it again. So everybody wear your God did it again shirts on next Sunday uh, as we get ready to go and have fellowship uh, with the Grace Tabernacle Church as we normally do every year. All right, okay. Um, the Bible declares that if will a man rob God, and he will rob me, he says, in tithes and in offering, you curse with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. He says, bring ye all the tithes in the storehouse, that there might be meat in my house. And then he says, prove me now. Herewith said the Lord of hosts, that I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there won't be room enough to receive it. The aphoristic apostle Paul comes right in and shines out on the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So let every man and woman give according to their purpose in their heart. Let him give not grudgingly or necessity. Why? Because God loveth a cheerful giver. Let us all stand. Okay, we're ready for our reading. Come on, come on, sis. We're ready. We're going to do this in unison on the count of three. One, two, three. Lord, I know, give you an offering. Only after I have given you the tithe, my giving reflects my total dependency on you and my obedience to your word. So this seed leaves my hand. I believe by faith it will never leave my life. I will trust you, O oh God, by honoring you in my loving and my giving. By faith I now stand in obedience to having blessings released, burdens removed, and benefits restored in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. This is a time for everyone to participate through worship and giving. We have Cash App, Givelify. So please, choose to give in one of those great ways. Thank you for joining in this worship experience on this morning. We pray that you were blessed by the message. Uh, come back and be with us on next week. We pray that God will continue to bless you, guide you, and guard you, and grant you his grace as you continue to serve him in this kingdom. Bless you, and come back and see us.